Namaste. Welcome to Satsang today. So, um, as you have probably heard me say, but it's it's always worth saying again, satsang is uh, for the direct experiential realization of what we really are, because in truth, we're not a separate being at all. There is only one being here. There is only one thing here. All of this is uh, the one being showing up in different forms. But it doesn't really help us to know that intellectually. It helps us to recognize that experientially. And that's what we're here for in satsang. And of course, any other challenges that come up along the way to uh, fully living as that. So that being said, I'd like to uh, open it up to see if anybody would like to do some self-inquiry with me, if anybody's desperate to break out of illusion, out of suffering, to find out what they really are and uh, to go deeper into an experiential seeing and feels brave enough to do it with me here um, live on Zoom, then uh, we'll go for it. So we'll see how many hands we get up. We'll start with Anish whenever you're ready. Okay. Hi. How are you? Doing well. Good, good. So, what do you want to uh, to dive into? You want to do some direct inquiry, see, uh, seeing and looking. Yes, please. Yeah. So, whereabouts have you got to? Have you done this before, or, or is it this the first time that we're you're doing this? Um. I've tried. I've tried before. Is what I would say, but maybe not gotten too far okay yeah okay so we'll just take it from the start and we'll we'll see um where we go with it it's always different every time so i'm just gonna ask you to search yourself i know that sounds a, a really strange thing to say but to see if you can actually find the separate being can you really when you actually look because it seems to be here there seems to be someone living in the body, using the body, but can you actually find where that separate being is? I can find a body, I can, I can sense a body, I can see a body. Yeah, absolutely. I can sense thoughts, which I believe to be my thoughts. But who is this my that these thoughts belong to? Can you find someone called Anish? Can you find a separate being? So we're not negating the fact there's a body, there's thoughts, there might be emotions, sense perceptions going on, but can we find this kind of legendary separate being to whom they, we feel that they belong? It's, it's almost assumed that I'm here, like, like this separate being is here and these thoughts and emotions and the body belongs. Yeah. But can you this. find it? Can you really, when you actually look, because it seems to be here, me, the, the, the me, the separate being, but let's just really look now experientially. Can we actually find this someone? There's a sense, this guy, this a, a sense of someone, but I don't really find this. Um... Yeah. When you actually, do, it seems to be here, this separate being, but when we actually try to pin it down, where exactly is it? Can you actually find an entity called you? You're doing really well. It's the oddest thing, right? That the entity is always assumed, but 
and there are there are like pieces of the entity, but not the entity. There are like references to the entity, the entity's thoughts, the entity's emotions, the entity's body, yeah, desires, but not the entity itself. I I directly find it. And all of those things, the desires, the thoughts, the the body, the sense perception gives this sense that there's someone here and until we actually look it's just assumed to be there and it seems very real but when we actually look like this can't actually find it how does that feel then when you recognize that does it bring up any fear or or how does it feel in the body to me it brings up both fear and relief Mm -hmm. yeah and that's very fear. common. Fear of like because it's strange, right? It's really strange how very, yeah. how this came to be. Um, and then the fear of also not knowing how to how to, I mean. It's like the ground dropping, right? I mean, it's not Somebody just pulled the the rug out from underneath what you thought was true. And for me, it was very shocking when I first saw there isn't actually anyone here in the way that I thought there was. And, um, but it helps to remember that we're only seeing how it's always been. You know, that that helped me to kind of look at this fear and um, we're only seeing what's actually true. Let's go a little deeper into if you want to. If you don't find this separate being, what do you find then? You are here. You are using that body to speak to this body. But you're not here as a separate being. How, what do you find then instead? Taking your time with this, you're doing so, so well. I do know that I'm here. Are you, so we, we're not, we, we've looked and we've established that you're not here as a someone, but you are here. So are you a thing, an object, or are you something different? Certainly not an object. I'm, I'm aware of objects, including thoughts as objects and emotions as objects and what we see as objects, but but the perceiver of objects. What can you tell me about that perceiver then? You said, I'm aware. Can you find that perceiver in any particular place? Does it have a, a location or is it different to that? If, if I point at any location that I might be at, I, I perceive that location. So, so, so technically I, I can't point to a location where I can say that I'm at. Mm-hmm. Or, or all locations appear in me, whatever location I might point at. Did you hear what you just said there? All locations appear in me. So what you are must be something very uh different to an object that space that beingness that consciousness which is not a thing and and yet in which all things arise including this body the thoughts all of that it is a fear still there when you're looking at what you do find or is it still there as it disappeared i have a fear of doership like Who's doing things or how will things happen? What will happen in the next moment? Or like losing a sense of doership also is like a loss of control. And that's bringing a lot of fear. Who's going to think about what to do and and how will the doing happen? So let's look at that uh, and then we'll uh, uh, move on to the next person because you raise something that's really important here. Because for me, this 
fear came up when I saw there isn't anybody here in the way that I thought. Okay, who's going to run my life then? Who's going to do all of that? But I'm going to ask you to see, has this separate being, has it just disappeared now that we're looking or has it never been there? Again, if you can't answer this question directly, just the looking is doing a lot of work here. Yeah, it, it's, it's clear it's never been there, but because I assumed that it was there, I had the sense of safety that, you know, this some entity doing the thinking and the acting, but knowing so if, that it's not there. If it's never been there, what has been doing the thinking? What has been doing the running of your life? Do we need a separate being for that if it's never been there? Because here's the crux of the fear. Without my separate being, I won't be able to function. Something like that, isn't it? But if it's never been there, then it is this um, open space of consciousness, this not a thingness that you really are, that's been running the show the whole time. And at first that's very shocking, but it, then it becomes quite reassuring that I'm not really going to lose anything in this seeing. It's never been a separate being. I really, really thought it was, but it's never actually been a separate being that's been driving my life. It's always been the real infinite me that is uh, doing that. Not in the same volitional way as the separate being thought it was. So if all we find every time we look is this space of consciousness, as we're calling it, then this no-thingness, then that must be what is driving all of this, including your life. It's very weird though, isn't it? It's very different to what we thought was going on. Would you say as a separate being, Helen, I don't really need to think and push and plan and anticipate and wait? Would, would that be the conclusion of, of, of what we are looking? Kind of what the separate being does, a sense of a separate being. That's what it does, isn't it? And it's important to recognize that the sense of a separate being still here, isn't it? it? Still seems like, even for me now, there still seems like there's a separate being here talking. But I've seen what you've just seen so many times that it's obvious it's never been here. And that the sense of a separate being planning and doing and deciding and thinking and all of that is a kind of optical illusion created by the presence of a body and thoughts going on in the head and uh, sense perception going on, all of that. But when you really sort of look at this, and I suggest doing this again and again and again, it becomes clearer and clearer that there never was a separate being. Therefore, you won't lose anything in this shift over of identity. It becomes clearer. I've always been this much bigger thing but I don't have to lose the sense of a separate being. Right now, the sense of that separate being is here talking to me, isn't it? Not an actual thing, just seems to be. Wow. <laughs> Powerful stuff. Thank you. Just keep looking again till the fear goes, because it will. It, it's only that it's very different, isn't it, to what we've thought to be true. Yeah, I think the looking again is going to be helpful because it, the sense keeps coming back stronger or at least as strong as, but not, maybe not as strong as that, but just a little milder, but it's still quite strong, the sense of self. Yeah. And um, it's important to remember, we're not trying to get rid of that sense of a separate self, only to see it isn't actually real. It's actually a useful thing, the sense of a separate being, so that we can remember our name and what time we need to be at work and all of that stuff. There's nothing wrong with it unless we believe it's all we are. That's when we suffer. Because when the body goes, it's gone. That sense of a separate being. So there's, that's where the fear comes. So just looking again and again, the fear begins to go and it becomes uh, less shocking and then very normal. This is what I've always been. This is what everyone is, even though they're all convinced that they're separate beings. Yeah. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> okay, so we'll take the hands that we've got up there. If I could ask for no more hands right now, just for, we'll see how time goes. 
Uh, so Leone, you're next. Head on the chopping block, as they say. I didn't realise it. I'd put my hand up that quick. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you. Um, so I was going to ask you about um, not feeling emotions, but literally this evening, as I was watching a film, some stuff I started to cry. So I think like that's just starting to rear its head. Um, can I'll just tell you about two things, but I don't need both things sort of looking at. Um, so recently, I've been um, asking about: Is it really true that I'm not safe? Um, because yeah. I know it's I know it's a massive thing for me at the moment, and, and probably always has been. Because um, I know, like, as soon as like say I hear like cats like having a fight and stuff, I'm straight downstairs and I'm worried about my my you know my cat and all that sort of stuff. Um, and recently, um, I've been having really bad nightmares um, about not being safe. And so is that sort of like a normal process? It can, it's things that we need to look at clearer in the waking state can start to bleed over into our nighttime dreams. Um, for me, there was um, a period where I was having lots of uh, scary dreams and um, r running away from monsters. Sometimes that, that monster caught me, sometimes it didn't, but this nondescript thing but it was um, uh, a dream representation really of this egoic sense of self in me that felt it was gonna be crushed or annihilated by the big self, the consciousness. So you quite often find that whatever the major emotion is that you're dealing with at the moment, that it will show up in the dreams. Um, so uh, cost dreams can be helpful in that way. They can, if you sort of wake up from a dream and you remember you felt very guilty or ashamed in that dream or fearful that can then be brought into your contemplation it's sometimes it will show us things that we can't yet look at in the waking state or don't have the tools to so um just looking at what emotion you felt in the dream if it was fear then uh, you're already looking at that anyway so i wouldn't think that you need to do anything else with that directly yeah yeah because it for me it's mainly about either my cats being hurt in the dreams or um someone hiding in my cupboards in the kitchen sort mm -hmm. of stuff so um yes yeah, so I'm just I'm just carrying on ask, asking the question um I think maybe what might be helpful for this evening is um I feel like uh I'm automatically like attached to all my thoughts that are coming up whatever they are they can be anything and I'm like oh yeah I believe that oh yeah I believe that so it, it feels like I'm really really attached to them yeah. let's try and find this believer then shall we okay yeah who is it where is it what is it that's actually believing thoughts just seeing if you can try to find it or find them find you <clears throat> because it's taken for granted, isn't it? I'm, I'm the one believing thoughts here. And it, and it feels like that, but just to stop and look, can I actually find someone believing thoughts here? I feel like I can. Okay, what, what happens when you look? I feel like there's a Leone, there's a yeah. someone. And can you... When you actually look directly at that someone, I want you to, rather than just feeling, I want you to really directly look and see, can you actually pinpoint where that someone is? Seems to be here. We're not arguing with that, but can you actually pinpoint that someone where it is, where it isn't? Can you pin it down when you actually try to find it? <clears throat> I don't know. That's a step forward right there, because uh, as we we're saying with Anish, if we don't investigate this, this person seems very real, very real. And all the problems then that come with that, all these karmic patterns, everything are felt to be 
very they're my patterns and my thoughts i'm the one believing all of that so <clears throat> even just to get to the point where i don't actually know if it's here or not is a huge step forward okay and because you really are the infinitely powerful being anything that you believe to be true without investigating will seem very real so if i really believe i'm a separate being it will really feel like it and <clears throat> my whole life will be run around this separate being and let's just look again though and see even though it really seems to be there so much so that mind says of course it is why do we need to even look but let's let's look anyway and see and there's no right or wrong answer here we're just the actual looking is is really doing the the work here can you actually find a someone called leone there's thoughts, there's a body, sense perception, emotions, but can you find anyone to whom they belong? No, I don't think so. It's a bit weird, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. So is it just sort of um, to keep to keep looking for that someone? Yeah. And it may seem strange that um, <clears throat> to look and not find something is the right answer. <laughs> but here it is in a way. Oh, not the right answer, but the answer that's going to help. So this uh, idea that we are a separate being has got so much momentum that it really, really, really seems to be true. So much so that we don't look for who knows how long this idea has been uh, perpetuated. <clears throat> so that when we do finally look and we can't find it, very quickly after that, this habit will reassert itself to, to go back to thinking of ourselves as someone. So looking again and again and again becomes clearer that not only is that separate being not here right now, it never has been. That this whole thing has run on belief, my belief and my lack of investigation, because I didn't know how to up until, you know, somebody showed me. But a little consistent looking and not finding, it actually begins to really give you some distance from your mind. Mm -hmm. Because... Um, what you do find is something different, isn't it? What do you find when you look then? You are here because you can hear the words I'm saying through those ears. Something is listening to these words. But you're not here in the way that you thought you were. It's not like you don't exist. You obviously do. But what do you find then if you can? Let's have a, one more quick look before we, because uh, this is very powerful. You don't find a separate being, what do you find? <clears throat> it might not be anything you can put words to or describe, but it's... Um, the word that just came was like, nice. Yeah. That's about it. That's a good yeah. start. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And can you see that your body feels a bit different when you put this attention on what is actually here? Does your body feel a bit different? Yeah, it just felt like, I guess I, I didn't want to use the word peaceful because I didn't want to like be a, like, say a cliche, but yeah, like nice and peaceful, a bit more relaxed. Relaxed, yeah. 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 It was, for me, that was how it started. I just felt when I was assuming I was a separate being, I felt tense. My body felt tense. When I actually looked, there was this relaxation that began to happen in the body. It was just, I'm not actually what I thought I was. And that was shocking, but also relaxing. And then it, it developed later into contentment and peace, the deep peace. Yeah. Thank you, Helen. Just looking again and again and again. You can't do this too much. So whenever you, and it begins to feel quite nice when you, when you do it as well. So there's that added bonus to it. Brilliant. Thank you. Well done. Well done. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, Amy, when you're ready. Hi, Helen. Hi, how are you? 
I'm good, thank you. How are you doing? I'm very well, thank you. Good. I'll leave the camera off just because my, my signal's a bit iffy. Okay. Um, did you want to do some inquiry or what, what did you want to do? Yeah, some inquiry would be great. Thank you. Okay, well, let's, let's start uh, as we've done before, just um, searching yourself, searching you and seeing if you can find this uh, well-believed in separate being. Seems to be here, really seems to be here, but can we actually find it when we really directly look? No, there's no fixed subject, so to speak. There's um, sensations of the body and um, sort of, you know, faint movements of energies and things like that. And no, Amy, that you can find and say, this is, this is me, this separate being. You can't actually find anything, any entity. No. And how does that, uh, I feel like Sigmund Freud when I say this, how does that make you feel, you know, <laughs> when you look and talk? <laughs> some, some... Um, does it bring up um, any fear or is it a, a pleasant thing or both? It's, um, yeah, it's a pleasant thing. There's no fear. Okay, good. And I'll ask you the same thing. What do you find then? You are here, you know, you are using this body to uh, communicate uh, but what actually do you uh, find when you look you don't find a separate being what do you find yeah so I, I find um, a sort of conscious awareness and is this a thing or is it not a thing how would you describe that can you describe that at all or is it not easy to to describe to put words to so it's spacious um it's not an object um there's an aliveness to it an awakeness to it does it have a particular place where it is Can you point to it and say so, it's over there or it's here or it's there or is it different to that? It's, um, there's no specific place that it is, although there's, there's, an, <clears throat> there's a knowing that it's everywhere and at the same time, there's still um, a feeling of being here. Yeah. Just looking at that, there's a feeling that I am here. So where is that here? You, you sort of use the word everywhere. Just let's play with this word, I am here. Where, whereabouts is here? We know where the body is, but where is this you, this, this conscious awareness? Can it have a yeah. place where it stops? Oh. feels like it's near the body there's not an exact place but it feels like it's kind of in and around the space of the body hmm. and um is there anywhere that it's absent from i know that's the same question i've just asked you i'm just kind of changing the question a little bit sometimes that just helps us to see a little clearer Sorry, say that again. From so, is there anywhere that it's absent from? Or maybe we could say, is it easier to say, is the body inside the awareness? Or can you get a sense of that? Yeah, the body is in awareness, the first question, because there's still this allegiance to I'm here near the body, <laughs> it's like, and then it, and then the thought is, I don't know, 
Um, where, where is where is near the body though can you, if we actually really look at that right now i'm here near the body can you pin that down where exactly is near the body because here's an, here's another one of those unexamined assumptions that seems like i'm only in a particular location i'm near and inside the body around the body but can you find where you stop do you are you are you just all around the body, can you say really when you actually look? How near is near? Or does it break down when you actually start to examine this? Are you still with us? Can you hear us? Yeah, I mean, I think that's that's one to sit with, really, because <laughs> it's there's it's like it's like I'm doing my brain. <laughs> so, so it's a totally normal that you you come across at some point in the self inquiry. Just illustrated something really helpful for me. So thank you. At some point, we come across our assumption that brings us back into. Um, separation so this idea that i'm i'm near the body is a kind of a location isn't it instead of the everywhere intuitively i know that i'm everywhere but there's this sense but a sense of being near the body is not the same as the actual formlessness is it so there might be something energetic that's near the body around the body but the formlessness the conscious awareness as you called it that just needs to be looked at and um, proved in your experience that it isn't in any particular place. Yeah, yeah definitely. And there's, there's, um, there seems to be an attachment to the arm energy right now. And I, I know that sounds strange, but I remember, I remember feeling this about um, a sensation in the heart, and I felt like, oh, that's that's me there was a real attachment to it and I remember bringing it to you like this in a session and um and then it kind of uh, dissolved and I felt a lot freer from time but uh, I can see like there's there's a thought that's saying you know this is this is this is me this you know this is kind of where where I am if you know what I mean um, it, well it's also you isn't it so um ultimately a sensation in the body is also me isn't it um but just seeing yeah. this first version of ourselves for want of a better word is is not located anywhere isn't limited that's the key uh, so we're not negating the body we're you know, embracing it in this uh, formlessness this conscious awareness um and looking like this may reflect to certain feelings in the body um for me it used to give me like a rush in the heart area when i looked also a sense of calmness, as we were saying with Leonie, and sometimes fear. Um, just recognizing that is an effect of the looking rather than what, what's actually looking itself. It's not a sensation or a feeling, is it? It's something different to those. Yeah. So just uh, checking these things out when they come up, mind will tell you, yes but look at this doubt next you know so you can take those into your inquiry then and um try to prove or disprove it experientially just to get clear yeah that's great thank you thanks thank amy you. It's wonderful <laughs> Not <good>. uh, <laughs> thank you. uh elaine when you're ready hi hi so I have no, go? What? Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe you should, because uh, I have no idea um, why I'm. I my hand is there. Okay. <laughs> I I'm seriously. I saw it on the screen and thought, oh. <laughs> One of those. Yeah. Who put my Someone hand? Someone else has done that. <laughs> Somebody. Somebody's volunteered me, and I have no idea what for. Um. 
So, yeah, if you if you want to take the lead. <laughs> okay. Great. Do you have a vague sense? Is there a question that you've been sitting with, or did you want to look at some inquiry, do some self inquiry, or what? What feels important? Um. It feels important to find whoever put their hand up, whoever pressed that key or whatever it is. Um, whoever sneakily betrayed you and put your hand up. Yes, whoever did that. And, and um, yeah, and I've been listening, thinking, and all uh, suddenly um, meaning and words are uh, just sort of vacated, vacated. <laughs> yeah, over, overrated anyway but yeah. <laughs> so let's start and see if we can find this who is it then that put put your hand up can you find uh, a separate being when you look well, it certainly felt like a separate being yeah after I noticed the hand was there um, but not before, right? No, I don't remember. Mm. Or, or, yeah. Um, so when that was there, it was, well, what person and why have they done that? Um, uh, because uh, you have nothing to say. Or you, 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 you know... <laughs> Apparently, though, the uh, the pure awareness feels differently. <laughs> Something to say. Pure to awareness you. is possibly there, yeah, yeah. saying, you, you know, do this because you need to see something. <laughs> you need to have um, yeah, a, a, a connection, I think. And, and to I suppose, if anything, that separation. If the question comes up or, or the, the, the statement that I am everywhere and I am in everything and everything is in me, I don't see it. That separate self stands in the way of me seeing it in everything. I can, I can go into meditation or something and it's all mine. <laughs> but to then, you know, move about, so there's something that blocks that. Let, let's look for that separate being then. The one that's blocking right now from you seeing your awareness. Mm -hmm. Where actually is it? Can you find it? Boy, does it seem to be here, but let's let's not stick with the seems to be. Let's actually find this, uh, the one that's causing so much trouble. In our inquiry, I mean, not you, not, I'm not saying you're causing trouble. I just want to be clear it's about like it. It's like causing a siren. It's like a siren, a silent siren that's saying, I'm not here. <laughs> you can't find me. I'm going to, you know, you really can't find me because I'm not going to show up. Um, Just searching it? and looking, can you actually find it concretely, more than a sense or a feeling that it's here? Because if it's here, we should be able to find it. Mm. <laughs> this little sounds like it feels like you know there's a little mouse running about saying of course I am <laughs> I'm here but I want to really get the microscope out now and see if you can <sighs> get the searchlight out where is this little mouse that's running around where is it it damn well vaporizes <laughs> every time I find it it's, and, and 
But there, there's an interesting thing. Does it actually vaporize? Yeah. Was it there and then it disappears when I look? Because that's a very different thing. Uh, and it's important to, uh, can we find it right now? The separate being. Not if I breathe. Um, <laughs> that's, that's a bit ridiculous. Um, let's not let's not judge ourselves. Let's just yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Let's be nicer to ourselves. I suddenly feel like I want to get very nervous and distracted. Yeah. I so to... we've got the searchlight out, and yeah. this thing that seems to be here is really trying to run away. Yeah just to actually see, is it really here right now? This thing that's causing so much mischief in our awakening, allegedly. Mm. Can you actually point to where that separate being is? That's someone that wants awakening so badly. I want to say yes, but no. I mean, you want to say yes? I want yes. to say yes, but, 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 yeah, but it's, it's kind of, it doesn't want to run around. <laughs> so it's, just, just, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, it just feels, when I look for it, really look for it and stop and, and, um, it becomes very still. Is it actually there? Is it becoming still? Or are you finding stillness that's always been there? I don't know, but I don't know. I, that's, for me, that's okay. Yeah, there's a, there's a thought that says, well, you know the right answer to that. Yeah, <laughs> and I don't want the right is always there. I don't <laughs> want the right answer. Yeah, that's, that's boring. And it's not going to help anyway, is it? No. So, just sticking with what we can prove experientially right now, yeah. experientially right now, because that's all that's going to really yeah. shift your identity away from mind. Yeah. So, experientially right now, can you find this legendary someone? Can you find a dotted line around your separate beingness that this is where Elaine is? No, but there's, there's a, still a, a sense of wanting to play with that, wanting to, 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 to um, avoid it, avoid yeah. it all of us. Yeah, 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 yeah. Of course, there's okay. some dots. I can put some dots around. Um, yeah, there's, there's a sense of that, um, but I, yeah that's totally okay i want to distinguish mm. between when you look you can't actually find a separate being experientially and there's also this energy that really doesn't want to admit that and wants to run away from that seeing and that's totally normal totally because um this phantom separate being has run on belief power and because We've given it all of our belief. It really, really, really seems to have been this pivotal figure all the way throughout our life, lifetimes. And it is the pivotal fictional character in I need to reach awakening, isn't it? So, yeah. of course, something's going to have an allegiance to saying, I, that, I, I don't like seeing that. I don't want to, you know, what's yeah. all this monumental seeking about then if 
if there isn't really a separate being of course something inside is going to go yeah okay no we've seen that okay next we'll move on so not fighting that we don't need to fight that we just need to keep looking and not finding looking and not finding and uh that just begins to calm down this energy that's trying to um distract and uh throwing stones over there you know don't don't look yeah. at this yeah 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 it's almost <laughs> like a flirtatious sort of game It's only because of the force of habit that we have. It's a very well-established habit to think of ourselves as a separate being, as someone, a person, and that is being directly contradicted here. And all of our stories are based on this separate being and something inside knows. But if I prove that I don't exist in the way that I thought I did, <laughs> what about all my stories then? You know? yeah. So I guess, hang on a minute, there's going to be no no epic battle to <laughs> to overcome here if if you take all my stories away i'll be just free yeah not oh. fighting that resistance it, it'll be there for a little while doesn't mean we're doing anything wrong it's important to recognize that something is wanting to see clearer what you really are your, your real self wants to see itself and some old egoic energies are working seemingly in opposition to that that's okay isn't it we don't need to yeah. do anything about that. Yeah. Gradually, the looking and the looking and the looking and the not finding and the not finding just begins to tip the balance into, I've never been this separate being. And I don't need to reach awakening. I am awakening. That will just become clearer and clearer as you look like this. Well, you did very well considering you didn't even want to put your <laughs> Okay. Yeah, thank, well you, well. thank you. Whoever put your hand up, I'm grateful. Yeah. yeah. I'll find them. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Okay. So uh Lisa, when you're ready. Hi, Helen. Hi, how are you? I'm really, really good. Thank you. Really happy to be here. Good, good. Good to talk to you. So uh, what would you like to, to do? Uh, are you, you want to do some self-inquiry or is there something else that's really urgent for you? Um, no, I, I mean, like quite a few people, I'm not really sure, you know, why the hand went up. There's um, <laughs> a lot of that going did, on. <laughs> but I then did get a sense of, whoa, what a great opportunity to hang out with Helen. <laughs> I've not been able to join as many satsangs just recently because I'm away, but, um, and, and then, um, yeah, and, the self-inquiry, I think it, it, I have a sense to deepen and I could resonate with Amy's, um, kind of where Amy got to with, with, with her inquiry. So, so yeah, I'd love to, um, yeah, do, do, some, do some of that and see where it, where it takes us just in terms of deepening. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you can't do this too often, as you know, I'm sure. So, you know, it's, um, it's going to be, uh, each time we do this, you get deeper into it and see clearer. So. So let's let's look for that separate being like we've started with everybody else. Oh, can you find it? What do you find when you look? Yeah, no, I'm I definitely can't find a separate being. There, um, there, there, maybe... is, there are Sorry. some um, uh, sensations and like the thoughts and there is some experiences going on, but in terms of a, a, a kind of a, <laughs> a separate entity. Yeah, yeah I can't. I'll so I'm assuming by now that doesn't bring up any fear anymore or it's just no okay. no and I, and I don't know whether it ever has my one of my first experiences it was like what maybe we call a direct experience was when it kind of really fell away was just so beautiful that yeah uh, that's kind of stayed with me so yes. so no, it's almost freeing actually Helen <laughs> good and then that's where we all end up eventually it doesn't always bring fear up for people you know sometimes it does sometimes it doesn't so yeah it doesn't it's okay yeah maybe I was just ready to let it go <laughs> yeah, for me it was terrifying but also a huge relief huge relief. <laughs> yes yeah you know all this work I thought I had to do as a separate being was suddenly nope you know yeah. it's not actually true so yeah. <laughs> makes life a lot easier <laughs> yeah definitely 
Yeah. So let's look at what we do find then. What do mm. you find when you look for yourself? So there is a sense of, of presence. Mm -hmm. You know, there is, there is something here. Yeah. <laughs> There's, um, yeah, very um, vital kind of energy that's, yeah, it's also very peaceful. Mm -hmm. uh, it's kind of at ease. Um, is, it, is it doing anything? Is it needing anything, this presence? Um, not now. It feels like it's just... Um, it's just so open because life or the this experience that is unfolding I can't tell you how just it's getting more magical every day it might help because I'm in Costa Rica I have to say <laughs> this is a yeah. magical place okay yeah. compared to Yorkshire I mean Yorkshire is fairly magical but Costa Rica slightly is different yeah. slightly different <laughs> I, and it's it has been an amazing time here because it just, I feel like life is flowing. There's a flow and I don't need to do a lot really. I mean, I've had to get myself from A to B. I have to engage this mind to, you know, move around and, uh, but, but then but is that just happening automatically? Is the presence doing anything to engage the mind? That's a good question. Um, is the presence doing anything to me? Well, that's kind of just happening too. That's, okay. that's really where I wanted to go with this. Yeah, because there's a, still a sense of, thank you. Um, there can still be a sense there was for me of doing something. Uh, mm. I have to, uh, a very subtle, um, but some sense that the presence was uh, changing in order to activate the mind or something like that. So if I've got to, my body's got to be in a certain place by a certain time, am I planning that or is just some thoughts happening that lead to some kind of plan? And are you changed in that as the presence? Are you, how involved in that are you? The presence doesn't change. It's just is. Yeah. So. And is it you or is, uh, is there a you and the presence or just presence? I can't find a you. So there is just presence. So therefore, I guess when there is something that says like last night, you better book your bus ticket for when you leave here what's doing that then how is that happening <laughs> it's a weird that? question isn't it it's weird yeah. it's worthwhile looking at because um it, it points at this underlying assumption we all have that i'm the one doing this still i had this for quite some time even after i recognized i am that silence or presence as we're calling it yeah. Do we still think, yeah, but I've got to plan my, I've got to plan this, you know, to get to the airport at this time and yeah. all of that. When I really looked, was I actually doing any of that? Or is it this kind of automatic software program called the sense of a me, made of thoughts and emotions and desires and sense perception that's kind of just leaps into action spontaneously and gets it done? Yeah, I mean, there definitely isn't that me. So therefore, it has to be something that is, a, well, it is a right. Everything is arising spontaneously, isn't it? Yeah. Even the planning, <laughs> even the planning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and you know, because I just, and I've, I am letting life flow. And the more I let life flow and don't plan or try to control or resist or it gets easier. Have you ever controlled or resisted? <laughs> <Great question. 
<laughs> well, said, well, yeah, I'm just saying yeah, you said you wanted to go deeper so you know you did yeah, ask yeah. <laughs> and this, is, this is wonderful so in the past yes there has been well there has been something that has thought or there have been thoughts that I've been planning because boy did there appear to be a lot of planning going on for a lot of my life so well all, now, of us are, all of us yeah but it's yeah it's yeah to look. But am I allowing see. more and resisting less here's here's another very subtle way that we still identify with the body yeah there is allowing there it's is happening. less resistance yeah and is that anything to do with you? Are you like managing that process? Are you managing to <laughs> shit the changeover? I'm really pushed in the air. But who is me? There isn't a me. <laughs> I'm going to leave you unemployed completely here. So you can just enjoy your holiday. Yeah, I, feel, I feel a bit like that anyway. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Cool. <laughs> I, I would like to explore because something Amy said, and you asked Amy about the location hmm. because I get a sense because there are eyes and I've got a lovely view right now looking out into the garden here when you say where where is this presence it, it, it there's a, there is a sense that it feels mainly in terms of what I can see you, you know so so the sense of it did make me think oh well okay yesterday my sense of presence was up the mountain so my presence was there my presence the presence I am presence so <laughs> um <laughs> so that's kind of a bit mind-blowing um, well yeah I mean it, it's it's the presence is here and it's looking through your eyes and it's using your senses so there is a sense that it's here in this place where the body is yeah. and yeah. that's that's totally normal and yes it is because it's it's inside using the body and but yeah where else is it where does it stop you know can you say for certain that all the way over there in costa rica that there's some dividing line <clears throat> where the presence stops between the body that's speaking and the body that's listening where would it stop in between could it stop and then there's something though about there's two things come up one I, I just really feel that this essence beingness we share share but there's two there isn't there oh, <laughs> 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 oh. Okay. And these are the subtle ways. I'm only pointing this out because of the subtle ways yeah. that we still kind of um, separate ourselves from other beings. If you, yeah. if your body set off to somehow walk across to where this body is here, would there be at any point before the two bodies met a place where you got to the end of your presence? No. And if we no. were close enough to hug each other? No. Two no. bodies? can you divide the presence into two into yours and mine if it isn't yeah. actually a thing yeah so then where are you do you have a location no, are you only no. somewhere it's just it, there's no words yeah there's no words yeah wow yeah wow yeah yeah so you're making these words come out of this mouth right now. <laughs> I don't a little know. Trippy. <laughs> yeah, a little trippy. I don't know either. Yeah, I don't know either. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. And sometimes when I talk to people, I say, well, I really don't know what I'm going to say next. They just, these words just keep coming where, where, yeah, yeah. <laughs> hmm. Does that, because you want to look at a specific thing, does that kind of get to the point of the root? Yeah, I think that's, yeah. Our yeah. body has a location. Our thoughts yeah. have a location, our emotions do, but do we? Are we in a particular place? Can we say that we're over here or over there? Or is this presence just not subject to definitions like that? That, yeah, 
Thank you. If you could say, you could maybe say it's location is everywhere, but even that is a kind of a location. Yeah. That puts about as close as you can there. get. Yeah. yeah, but it's, thank you. I think that I'll stay with that analogy of coming to meet you. <laughs> because unless we examine it, we do hold on to these assumptions that at some point I would get to the end of myself, you know, some, if I walked in any direction, my body, I would find some end to my being, some boundary where I stop. Yeah. yeah. And so th then it just kind of moves into, okay, so something then about as awareness is localizing. It seems to localize the presence of a body and then thoughts and emotions seem to make it local. Seem to. Seem to. Okay. And there's nothing wrong with that seems to, is there? Just to recognize, no. not actually. But you're, no, you see that separation. I was going to say, you're seeming to as well. <laughs> That's kind of, so the, the, this, your form is having an experience that is different to my. Yeah, the experience in each form is different, isn't it? So the form, there is a form having an experience. Oh, that's what it feels like. There is an individuality, but not a separateness. You like yes. this tea, I yes. like that, I like coffee, I like this thing, you like that. I have this accent, you have that one. There's this individuality, the way the uh, presence is expressing itself through each body-mind vehicle is individual, but not separate. Yeah. There's a difference between those two things. Yeah, and I get that, I feel that like waves on the ocean each wave is different but it's still the ocean mm. and that's the beauty yeah. of it isn't then if, if we're all the same the way that we were showing up like this it would be utterly dull yeah well i don't know maybe not but <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> like giving me around... something to sit with to kind of sorry you gonna say well i was gonna say then there's something around well as the beingness then, so it's the same beingness and you're having a, your form is having a different experience, an individual experience, but the beingness is experiencing your individual, the form's individual experience and this form's individual experience. Same one being, like kind of watching, if you had like an infinite number of TV screens, you could, any one of them, would seem to be different but it's the same one watching all of the body mind yeah I, I suppose i'm trying to find i'm trying to this let's call it an intelligence is beingness i'm trying to be that so that i know your experience but that's not do, do you get me you do I, know I, my experience but you can't know it in that body oh, right you see the difference okay. yeah yeah, so so how can I, how, is it possible then for beingness, is it possible to, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. in this form, to experience what beingness is experiencing? I mean, that'd be just mine, that'd be just like, you know, in, in a seven billion and, and, and I don't know. Do you want to, do you want to really push this as far as it will go? That's one of those Go loaded on. questions. You're like, yeah, no, I'm not sure. Yeah. <laughs> I'm up for it. Is there, from the perspective of beingness, does it see forms? What does it see? Ah, does it see forms? No. Because with no, the mind, it. we're making the distinction beingness and form or body. Yeah. But from the perspective of beingness, does it see forms or does it see itself everywhere? Does it see at all? In, in a way it does, it's, it's aware, isn't it? It's conscious, but. It's aware, yeah, it's, 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 but it's not a, yeah, but that awareness consciousness. If it's everywhere and it doesn't end, mustn't it be right where what we're calling a human body is? Oh. Yeah. Is there really two things? Is there really a human body and the beingness right where this thing is here that I'm using to speak? 
and, and this might seem on the edge of what you can prove right now, that's okay. Just this looking uh, is really shifting layers of uh, illusion here because the assumption is that this is a human body, this is a form, that all of this is forms, but is that how the beingness sees it? No, because it's, and this is one of the first teachings that when I first started listening to your satsangs that really just went, whoa, it's form and formless. It's not one or the other. It's the same. It can show up either way. It's yeah. only the mind that says there's two different things, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. We get it's my mind that, yeah, it's my mind that's kind of like, well, if there's something that's experienced all these forms, how do you experience that? All those forms. But, but it's, yeah, it's all the same. Mm, I'll sit with that. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. Ooh. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Then we pushed that pretty far, yeah. Yeah, that's I mean, wonderful. Thank you. <laughs> well, that, done. That, well done. That's why I put the hand up. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, that's what it was, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, have a wonderful you. holiday and... Uh, Thank you, Helen. Now we've blown your mind up and we'll, uh, <laughs> we'll yeah. leave it there. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> okay, so we'll, I'll just um, read a couple of questions that have been sent in before we finish tonight because we've quite a few uh, emailed in. Uh, this one says, uh, TY for all you do, found you through Teachers of God, Pure Presence, I uh, feel like I'm going backwards or falling apart all of a sudden. In the contemplation exercise, can I ask the wrong question and end up staying stuck in my karmic patterns? How do I know I'm asking the right question? Thank you for all, uh, excuse me, sorry. Thank you for all you and your team do. Much love. Can't speak tonight, sorry. I can't read, that's for certain. Um, how do I know I'm asking the right question? And if I get the wrong question, can I stay stuck in my karmic patterns? So there is no ultimately right question. That's the first thing I want to say. So in contemplation, just in case you haven't um, done this before, uh, on the YouTube channel, uh, Satsang with Helen Hamilton, there's a core teachings playlist. And one of those is contemplation. It's art of using a question, questioning if a belief is true. And... Um, the isn't there isn't an ultimate right question there's only a right question for right now so that takes some of the pressure off your body will tell you if you found the right question very important your body will respond positively with a sense of excitement or openness or something like that when you found the right question most of all i would search for the question that comes from the emotion so you've got a particular kind of pattern that's going on looking at what emotions come up when that karmic pattern plays and then asking, starting with one emotion. So let's say fear and guilt come up when a particular pattern plays, starting with just one of those emotions and asking it what it wants to tell you. So when I did this myself, it's guilt said that I wasn't uh, good enough, that there's something fundamentally wrong with me, something like that. Fear said that I was in danger, I wasn't safe. Anger said, I'm blocked, I'm limited, uh, something like that. I can't get what I want. So the right question is the one that's coming from the emotion because the emotion is showing us that we're still believing some thought and then we seem, simply turn that into, well, is that actually true? I've always assumed I'm not safe, therefore I feel a lot of fear in my life gives me circumstances that agree with that assumption until I question. Most importantly though, more than anything I've just said, is the sincere desire to see the thought behind the pattern, the belief behind the pattern. So even if you've got the wrong question, but you really want to see what's behind it with genuine curiosity, not mine's kind of judgment, but just, um, I really want to know what this is about, this pattern. What's, what's the belief behind that? Then it will have to show itself. So even with the wrong question, the belief will still, uh, you'll still transcend it anyway. So hopefully you can relax a little bit there knowing it's not so much this specific question, but the spirit of questioning 
that's most important. So <clears throat> you can never really get stuck in a karmic pattern. You can um, believe, it takes a lot of energy to believe a thought, believe it or not. And to believe a lot of thoughts costs us a lot of energy. But we can, so we can't get stuck in them because that's all we want to put so much energy in. But we can believe that we're powerless over the patterns and then we'll live that belief. So remembering today, like we've seen, that you're not really a separate being. And that these karmic patterns belong to a separate being. Seeing first what you really are as much as you can and then questioning contemplating, recognizing that nothing can be hidden from you. <clears throat> and, and uh, you know, trying to find the right question, but not uh, obsessing over it, because it's really more important to just simply ask. And um, it sounds like you're on the right track. You uh, can always rely on your body to give you real time, honest feedback, positive or negative sensations. Uh, the more positive the sensations when you ask the question, the more, um, when you think about the question, then the more likely it is that you've got the right question for right now. So I hope that helps. We'll just go to uh, one more. Okay. Uh, hi, Helen. I have to say all is well here and has been for some time now. I experience a lot of joy and peace and get to do a lot of what I enjoy. I notice immediately when there's a contraction and quickly can question the belief or assumption that's showing off. I do have an issue. I work in a healthcare position and do not find my work difficult. We are expected to do some ongoing educational training or lectures, which must be logged in our own time and which if we are called will have to be submitted. I resist doing any of this for many reasons, like I don't like doing it. It's boring and time consuming. However, when I read an email or see any mention of an audit, a dart of fear goes through the body and I think, um, oh bleep, I'm not gonna read out what you put here. Uh, uh, oh dear, let's put that one there. What if I'm called? I will have nothing to submit and that's the end of this career. I have questioned, what am I resisting? Well, it's the belief that keeps me from doing any of it. Also a question, do I have to do anything or am I actually doing anything? It's confusing, yet it's still an issue. I'd like to forget about it completely or even better. When I do think of it, I feel nothing but peace and know it all as well. I figure this really has nothing to do with the work, but something still is believing I am separate. I'd love to hear what you think, what you make of this. As always, I love your insights and your way of getting to the bottom of these stubborn beliefs. Thank you, Helen love okay so this idea of the fear coming up at the idea of an audit is really pointing to me here's the emotion if there's an audit there's a real sense you're not safe you're not going to be safe then that the audit is dangerous to you there's a fear comes up so for me this is pointing at this idea that the light being shined on you in your work and your uh, reports um uh, or lectures or, or whatever we're calling them, that if somebody were to actually look at yours, that they wouldn't be good enough. There's a fear um, that if somebody really looked at that, those that I'm doing, that they're not good enough and I'll be uh, in trouble. So here's what the fear is saying. It's coming up as fear, but it's also hiding this unworthiness, this sense that there's something uh, flawed in what you do. And as you said here, it points the idea that you're doing, and we've looked at that in the inquiry tonight. But just um, might really help to focus on this sense of inadequacy, unworthiness, that's reflecting in this particular aspect of the work. And as it's questioned deeply, then you'll have this sense of peace all the time, uh, even in this area of the work. You'll know that if you have to show your work, it will be absolutely fine. It will be up to the same standards as everything else you do. It's just probably some residual unworthiness where I feel called out, I feel exposed. If I have to uh, suddenly produce this piece of work to be submitted, if uh, there's an audit like this. So 
it's a sneaky one, but it's really just fear because I feel not good enough in this area. And we might have seen in our self-inquiry and our contemplation that I am good enough. I am the self. I am the consciousness, the awareness, the presence, as we've been calling it tonight. But it can linger in certain parts of our lives, little pockets, where we're still living as if we're not good enough. Here, here is this fear telling you there's a sense that if somebody really looks closely at the work you're doing here in this area, it won't be what's required. It won't be up to par. So just to have a look at that, it'll begin to dissolve. Why should this be any different than anywhere else? If you are the self now, can anything that you're producing, your work be inadequate? Can it be less than it needs to be? So hopefully that gives you a direction to go with it. Um, yes, you're not doing anything as we just said with the presence, but here's where these old ideas just persist. And it might be showing up in other areas of your life still too. It will come with this guilt or shame, um, uh, usually hidden, masked by some fear. So, okay. Wow, well, what a satsang. We've had some powerful seeings and sharings and plenty of hands went up that, uh, that weren't supposed to, but it's all good. Uh, automatic hands. Thank you for all your sharing, your brave um, uh, self-inquiry too. And um, it's never easy to kind of share like this, uh, live on a session like this. So I just want to say thank you to those that did. It's um, always revealing and takes us deeper every time we look. So we can never really do uh, too much looking. And I just want to encourage you, if you don't find self-inquiry easy at first, I didn't either. It seemed totally alien to me and um, pointless even when I first started because I was so sure I was going to find this separate being. Um, so if you're feeling that when you first start inquiry, it's totally normal. So thank you so much. Namaste.